Court sentences five to death over of a bank robbery. INEC presents certificates of return to a dual governor elect and deputy. Plus two to conduct first mock LG poll September 28. South Africa receives remains of 42 freedom fighters who died on exile. Hello and welcome to Trust TV's news updates. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thanks for joining us. Justice Halima Salman of the Aquara State High Court has found the five suspects involved in the of a robbery incident guilty of illegal possession of firearms, armed robbery and culpable homicide. According to the judge, the offences are punishable by death. The incident happened in April 2018. Delivering the judgment, which lasted three and a half hours, the judge said all evidence submitted by the prosecuting team found them guilty. On the pos possession of firearms, the verdicts pronounced judgment of three years in prison. The convicts are Ayoade Akinu Boson, Ibikule Ogunleye, Adiola Abraham, Salahuddin Aziz, and Ni Ogundiro. While there were six, one of the suspects, Michael Adigu, died in custody. Preferring journalists, the prosecution counsel said various reasons ranging from the COVID-19 period and national assignment given to the judge informed the long process and thanked the court for the judgment. Representatives of the defense counsel, however, said the judgment will be appealed soon. In July, the court reserved judgment in the case. Thursday's judgment came six years after some robbers stormed off our inquiry state, robbing at least five commercial banks in the community. Over 30 persons, including policemen, were killed in the robbery. An undisclosed amount of money was also carted away from the banks. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edun, says the federal government is making concerted efforts to reduce food importation. Edun Wale filled in questions at the interministerial press briefing, which is part of activities to mark Nigeria's 60 40 independence anniversary, noted that the long-term agricultural goals of the federal government are already yielding results. He said the production of seeds and seedlings made available to farmers is part of efforts by the government to improve on food production. He also said that the removal of fuel subsidy was a necessary and bold move by President Tunubu that has drawn support from international financiers. And said although the effect of the subsidy removal has been tough on Nigerians, the government has embarked on several interventions of 75,000 naira to 15 million households. On the petroleum sector, the minister mentioned that the president has implemented a major innovation in facilitating a mechanism where domestic operators can buy crude from local refineries in Naira. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has presented certificates of return to the winner of the Edo State Governorship election, Monday Okbebolo, of the All Progressive Congress, APC. The ceremony took place at the INEC headquarters in Abuja on Thursday. INEC declared Okbebolo winner of the Saturday 21st September election after pooling 291,667 votes to beat his closest contender, Aswei Gadulo of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, who pooled 247,274 votes. Olumide Akpata of the Labour Party came a distant third in the race with 22,763 votes. 14 other candidates contested the seat but got less than three frontline candidates. The APC candidate cleared over 10 of the 18 local government areas, leaving the PDP candidate with marginal victory in the other local councils. The APC gained control in two of the three battleground senatorial districts in the state. The Plateau State Independent Electoral Commission has announced plans to hold a mock election on Saturday, September 28, as part of preparations for the local government elections scheduled for October 9, 2024. The head of media, Plaisek Koro Yakubu, made this known in a statement issued to journalists in Jos on Thursday. She explained that the exercise is aimed at test running the deployment of the voter verification software for the election using live voters. According to her, the mock election will be conducted in six selected local governments across the state's senatorial districts and will take place between 9 a.m. and 12 noon. The electoral body further stated that the local government areas where the mock election will be held include Wase, Shendam, Pangshin, Mangu, Riam, and Just North. 
A federal high court sitting in Kano on Wednesday rejected an all-progressive Congress APC application to frustrate the State Independent Electoral Commission from conducting the local government election. The motion ex parte filed on 20 September before Justice Simon Amobeda, APC and one Amino Ali Utiga against the State Electoral Umpire, Kano State House of Assembly, Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice and 11 other defendants, the plaintiffs urged the court to grant interim injunction to restrain the conduct of the council election across the 44 local government areas. The plaintiffs also sought the leave of the court for interim injunction, directing all parties to maintain status quo and for the electoral body particularly to stay further actions regarding the preparation for the conduct of the poll in Kano, pending the hearing and determination of the motion on notice. APC had further asked the court to grant the leave to the bailiff of the court to service Kansiek and State Assembly and two other defendants with the, all the processes in the suit through any staff or officer at the Office of Attorney General of the State. Responding to APC prayers, Justice Amobeda declined to grant an interim injunction seeking to stop Kansiek from perfecting arrangements for the processes of the conduct of council election already slated to hold October 26, 2024. The House of Representatives on Thursday passed a resolution to investigate the bribery allegations leveled against the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Nigerian Correctional Service, NCS, by social media influencer Martins Otse, also known as Very Dark Man. The resolution of the House came after the adoption of a motion of urgent public importance sponsored by the member representing Ikotek Bane, SN Udim Obot Akara, Federal Constituency, Akwaibom State, Patrick Umo. In this in his address to his fellow lawmakers, Umo expressed concern over the widely circulated publication by a very dark man against the EFCC and the NCS. He said the publication alleged that the EFCC dropped money laundry charges against Idris Okunaye, also known as Bob Risky. Publication also alleged that Idris Okunaye, upon conviction for abuse and defacing of the Naira by the court, did not serve his time at the Nigeria Correctional Service, but was logged outside the confines of the service. Following the adoption of the motion, Speaker Tajuddin Abbas, who presided over the plenary session, referred it to the Committees on Financial Crimes and Reformatory Institutions. The committee is to report to the House within three legislative weeks for further action. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Sajuddin Abbas, has acknowledged that despite recent progress in addressing insecurity, Nigeria continues to face significant challenges. He stated this in his welcome remark during the House's plenary session on Wednesday, following its resumption from annual recess. This and other resolutions of the House are brought to you in this report. Speaker Abbas highlighted that since the last session, Nigeria has experienced notable political, economic and security developments. His father announced that the House would organize a legislative security summit in the final quarter of the year, with a focus on reforms aimed at enhancing interagency collaboration and improving the use of technology to tackle insecurity. These issues, he said, would be prioritized in the remaining session of the 10th House. Security challenges remain a significant concern, particularly in the North. However, substantial progress has been made in combating insurgency with military operations successfully neutralizing over 150 terrorists and major bandit kingpins, according to recent reports from the Nigeria Armed Forces. Also on Wednesday, he called for a special intervention fund from the federal government to support victims of the recent floods in Burma State. They also urged the federal ministries of health, power, and other relevant agencies to address the damage to infrastructure caused by the flooding. I will call on the citizens of this country to continue to come to the aid of the affected victims of Maiduguri. Businesses are lost. People lost their livelihood. People are displaced. That they should look into the issue of what has been in Maiduguri and use his magnanimity and, you know, leadership spirit by creating a huge amount of not less than 300 billion. We have seen the oneness as a nation. We have seen contribution. We have received support from all walks of life. But still, the level of capital infrastructural damage caused by this 
incidents is huge. If not urgent intervention is made to address the devastation of the University of Maiduguri Teaching Hospital, the people of Borno State and I dare say neighboring states and neighboring countries are at high risk of disease outbreak resulting from the flooding. In another development, the House of Representatives has directed the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to assess the potential hazards of recent earth tremors in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, and develop immediate safety measures. This followed a motion of urgent public importers by House Minority Leader Kingsley Chinda, calling for an urgent investigation into the unusual seismic activities in Abuja, with concerns raised over tremors reported by residents in various districts. Chinda stressed the importance of addressing these tremors, warning that they could cause significant damage to critical infrastructure if not addressed promptly. The House also tasked its committees on FCT, Environment and Emergency Disaster Preparedness to investigate the cause and propose necessary legislative actions. The House is worried about the potential damage to infrastructure, including homes, office buildings, roads, and other critical facilities, should these tremors persist or escalate in intensity. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has also passed for second reading a bill seeking to authorize the disbursement of 419.8 billion naira from the Federal Capital Territory Administration's Statutory Revenue Fund. Of this amount, 38 billion naira is allocated for overhead costs, while 381.8 billion naira is designated for capital expenditure. The only new project it is just two line items. So I said there is no need of even coming uh, to defend uh, two line items that uh, we did the 2024 statutory together with him, with members of committees here. So I said uh, I should just call for this meeting uh, to inform honorable colleagues. The funds are intended for the service of the Federal Capital Territory Administration for the financial year ending December 31, 2024. The escalating insecurity along Nigeria's northwestern border with Niger has taken a severe toll on local communities and the nation's economy. Reports of armed attacks, kidnappings and the smuggling of weapons have become commonplace in these borders. These illicit activities have not only disrupted businesses but have also crippled revenue generation at border crossings. In an effort to combat this crisis, customs officials are facing significant challenges in protecting the nation's borders. Despite their best efforts, the proliferation of arms and ammunition continues to threaten the safety and security of both residents and security personnel. Jamil Mabai tells us more in this report. Because unlike many other states in northwest Nigeria, have witnessed heightened insecurity attacks, especially on communities across border areas. These activities have disrupted not only businesses, but also affect revenue generation across these borders. This quantum of experts allege that some miscarriages living in these areas serve as informants to criminals operating in this axis. Security personnel stationed along the border areas and frontline areas like Jubia local government find it difficult to discharge their duties which is now affecting revenue generation of the country. Yeah, we just want them to cooperate with us and to cooperate with the government of the Nigeria, to cooperate with the government of Nigerian Customs Service to achieve our aim. And what is our aim is revenue generation. What is the aim is for Nigeria to be peaceful. Responding to these threats, the Assistant Controller General of Customs, Unbi, Sambut Angela Dima, engage custom personnel on strategic ways to protect themselves. This is one of the reasons why we came here to strategize and tell our people to be alert because uh, these bandits, most of them are influenced by drugs and when they want to act you may not know where they act. So at what time, at what point. So we have to tell our officers to know how to behave, how to move, they let them be low profile and let the let the, let the community to be low abiding and be low profile in dealing with people. Over time, border communities across the northwest harbor criminals, helping them in committing crimes against the state in exchange for money. 
encouraging these bandits to hide and do take people into their custody and they will be bargaining as if they are selling animals. So we have to tell them to help us or to help the government and be on the same page with the government. We have no any other country than this country. Anywhere you go, you are a second citizen, a second class citizen. The Assistant Controller General of Customs says only with the cooperation of traditional heads, community members and other stakeholders can these personnel discharge their duties. Jamil Mabai, Trust TV, Kasana. Over in Lagos State, the commander of the Niger Security and Civil Defense Corps has declared his readiness to collaborate with local security networks and community associations to combat vandalism and oil theft in areas with oil facilities across the state. State Commandant of the NSCDC, Kenshiro Adidoton, revealed this while addressing key stakeholders from the marketing and refinery sector at the command's headquarters in Abuja. Here's the report. Commandant Adidotu emphasized that collaborative efforts between the Corps and local security groups is essential to maintaining the safety of critical oil infrastructure in Lagos, adding that the command remains committed to working with all relevant agencies to ensure the security of the state's resources. The stakeholders, representing key players in the marketing and refinery sectors, expressed support for the initiative, noting that the protection of oil installations is crucial to sustaining the country's energy supply chain. We are responding to any attempt for anybody to do to carry out uh, this nefarious act of vandalization. So on a regular basis, we are on the road, we are monitoring the pipelines, we are monitoring the right of way, and uh, we are working with various communities for information so that we are able to nip whatever that is going to happen in the world. A representative of the oil sector, Eniola Ulubenga, commended the Lagos State Commandants for the ongoing efforts against vandalism and assured the NSDC of the industry's willingness to work closely with the Corps to achieve its mandate of protecting vital infrastructure. If we are to carry arms, we don't need to consult. We don't even need this courtesy visit at all. Uh, our uh, main aims and objective of this assignment is to ensure that we quickly give the security personnel information of what is happening in our locality. That's the purpose why we generate our men all across the local government of the Federation. Anywhere this irregularity could be found, ensure that the security personnel alerted immediately and the, and the needful should be done immediately. Speaking on the NSDC's operational strategies in Lagos, the command's public relations officer, Deputy Superintendent Oluwashiun Abolurin, highlighted the importance of combining kinetic force with a community-centered non-kinetic approach. The non-kinetic method, according to Abolurin, seeks to involve all stakeholders, including community associations, students' groups, religious bodies, and local leaders to build stronger security networks. The command, he said, believes that engaging the public in security matters will significantly improve early detection of criminal activities and promote a sense of collective responsibility. If you listen very well to the NSCDC's approach, you discover that we use uh, two methods, basically, and most of the other um, you know, outlines are embedded in these methods. We have the kinetic approach and the non-kinetic approach. We've discovered that it's not just all about, you know, the action, 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 using the force alone. People need to be engaged. So this state's commandant, Mr. Ida has, you know, revamped that non-kinetic approach in Lagos State, where we have states, uh, I mean, state stakeholders, uh, community engagement with stakeholders, the associations, the groups, the students' body, religious body, and the likes in a bid for us to speak to them, to share common ideas together, you know, look at gray areas, look at better ways of doing things, and the rest of that. The Lagos State's command of the NSCDC believes that a collaborative approach will be pivotal in safeguarding oil facilities and reducing incidents of theft and vandalism in the states. The Bauchi State Association of Sellers of Fairly Used Materials, popularly known as Berkinkura, has appealed to residents of the state to desist from describing their activities as illegal. Some members, who are mainly women, say they are in the business to improve economic well-being of their families 
and those of other people. Trust TV's Adamu Imam completes the report. Despite the lingering high cost of living due to the present economic realities in Nigeria, women in Bochi state are taking the advantage. The situation makes bricks business to enhance their economic well-being. They say the business of fairly used materials has empowered many women in Bauchi. People are trying to destroy our business with the insinuation that we're buying stolen goods. This is not true. If our business is illegal, we would not have been here for long. All we do is to help women who usually bring their goods here buy and sell. If you take that away, stealing would have become rampant in this area. We always do our best because all fingers are not equal. So we are here for our daily bread and also to help our families. So we appeal for government intervention in this our business of buying and selling fairly used items. We are here as part of efforts to protect our dignity as women. We are engaged in this trade because we are mainly widows and women who know what is good for themselves. However, people are trying to give us a bad name, but we know that what we are doing is clean and legitimate. Earlier, the chairman of the association, Malam Bello, says their business is genuine, approved by the authority and accepted by the community. It is not everybody that goes to the market or shops do so to buy expensive and brand new goods because of the high cost of living. That's why we decided to engage in the sales of fairly used items. He also urged the state government to include them during empowerment programs as according to them the place they use for the business is not conducive and as such should be addressed since they are contributing to the state economy and revenue generation. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bochi. In business, the Nigerian Nair continued its slide against the U.S. dollar, closing at 1,667 Nair, 42 Kaba, in the official investor and exporter INE window on Wednesday. This represents a 0.54% depreciation from the previous day's close of 1,658 Nair, 48 Kaba. It struggles as it hovers in the 1,600 range. However, the Central Bank of Nigeria is working to stabilize the Naira by selling an additional $20,000 to each bureau de change operators in 90 Naira to a dollar. The remains of 42 South African freedom fighters who died while exiled in Zimbabwe and Zambia during the struggle against white minority rule arrived in the country Wednesday. The remains were received by government officials and family members at the Waterclough Air Force Base in the capital Pretoria after being exhumed in Zambia and Zimbabwe for their reburial in the country of their birth. This is part of a government program to bring closure to families whose loved ones died away from home while serving in the underground structures of both the African National Congress and Pan-Africanist Congress. Before the apartheid system ended in South Africa in 1994, many activists left the country to receive military training and the, remains of with the aim of returning home to wage an armed struggle. Others left the country to avoid being arrested by the apartheid regime for their involvement in anti-apartheid activities and choose Zimbabwe and Zambia, where the underground structures were the strongest. President Cyril Ramaphosa is expected to host a homecoming ceremony for the repatriated remains on Friday before they are handed over to their families for reburials across the country. With that, we've come to the end of news updates at this time. For more of our news programs and documentaries, do well to follow us on our social media platforms and on our YouTube live stream. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thank you for joining us at this time.